Transport Scotland have got a, a, a real challenge with the construction of this bridge because it must be open in 2016 uh, when uh, weight restrictions are due to be imposed on the existing bridge. In 2007 we took over the job and together with Jacobs, which we're in JV with, we developed the existing information and then we worked out what additional link we would need to end up with a coherent design. With every iconic structure, what we see is above ground. Uh, we see the beautiful part, the functional part that's used by everybody. Obviously that sits on the foundations. Where the bridge touches the ground is of great importance. To design those elements, you need to know what the ground conditions are uh, along the alignment so you can come up with a design that is both effective for its required performance, but it's also economical. So it's management of risk at the highest level. Managing geotechnical risk is a, a major part of what we were trying to achieve. Uh, between a half and a third of delays on a project of this scale can be related to, to ground-related issues. The main challenge on a project of this type is obviously the scale of the works, but this particular crossing has uh, some real difficulties. It has to cross a deep marine channel with a wide variety of ground conditions and therefore gathering data in order to understand the geotechnical risks was very significant. The bridge has three main towers. Two of those are sitting on circular caissons and the third is sitting on beam rock in the middle. The process of placing these circular caissons was uh, difficult to say the least. Within the environment of the fourth which is tidal and has quite significant currents running up and down it. All of the caissons you need positioned within almost millimetre accuracy. So understanding what those soils are is important to the contractor. We were able to provide that information to him early in his design development and he's used that through the development of the design but also to control the works. The process of ground investigation and trials is one continuous process. The ground investigation part is done to reveal the ground conditions. The construction trials link on to the back end of this investigation, but the construction trials are really related to how the ground might behave during the temporary works. Through the process, it's, it's become very apparent to me just how important construction trials are in, in terms of managing geotechnical risk. The only way to get the contractor to demonstrate that he is capable of building uh, in such challenging ground conditions in the marine environment is through trials. Now, if you specify trials which are too large, then it becomes a cost burden to the project in itself. So the smart thing to do is specify trials which focus on the areas where you have most concern and design a trial to meet that objective. It's a great job to work on. It's a, a big job, it's full of challenge, and it's full of great people as well. It, it, it has everything. What this bridge is going to provide is a bridge that will be designed for the weather, uh, so it won't be shut to high-sided vehicles when the wind blows. Uh, it, it is there to provide, uh, to provide the crossing. Mm -hmm.